people are afraid of the power of, of their thoughts. Because the fear is, if my thoughts are that powerful, then I could destroy something else. I could, I could be responsible for harming things. You know, if this is my world, so to speak, and my mind made it up, then the fear of starting to claim the power of the mind is the fear of destruction. You know, it's the fear of, oh my God, what could I do? What have I done? You know, oh my God, it, it is hell of my own making, and did I misuse my mind to make hell? You see how terrifying? Or Michael was sharing with us, you know, the fear that I am the devil himself. That's, that's the terror, you know, that's the all in terror, is that, that, uh, that if I am the devil, and the devil is destructive, or evil, or anything like that, that's where the mind absolutely freaks, that there could be such a thing as powerful evil. And so, until you first, start to take the blinders and the, the limits off your mind and start to recognize the power of, of the mind. That everything that is perceived is not there by a random accident. That everything in this entire cosmos is the result of the power of that mind. It's not where it ends, in other words, you know, that's just like with The Secret, you know, it's a, it's a great movie to start to help empower the mind, you know, it's all, it's a lot about manifesting. And manifesting can have a bad name, you know, in some spiritual circles, but, but I, I would just say it's a stepping stone into this true healing. So, you know, eventually you end up having experiences of how absolutely powerful the mind is, and how absolutely powerful thought is. And you finally, instead of trying to play small, and play like a small human being, with these little thoughts whirling around, like, Jesus makes jokes in the Course, where he's talking about these, uh, these little neurotransmitters, these little electrical impulses in the brain. And to think that those things that science thinks of as equates with thoughts, those little impulses in the brain, is like whoosh, holding a match up to the sun. That's how far off that metaphor is. That those little neurotransmitters, those little, you know, when they do the brain scans and they have little electrical impulses moving, Jesus says in this course that that's like holding a match up to the sun. The sun, this massive, <laughs> explosion of, of heat and gases that's so far away from humans that humans still seem to, from false cause effect, get burned by this glowing ball of gases that's way, way, way far away. It's a star. And, and what Jesus is saying is, you've, you've convinced yourself in this human identity, you, you really think that that those thoughts that you think you think, or that you were singing about in Stream and Dreamio, you know, you only think you think in Stream and Dreamio, you've so convinced yourself that you're so tiny and small, that you wonder, you know, why your affirmations don't work. Why you can go to sleep feeling joyful and wake up feeling bad, and saying, what is it? What do I need to do? What technique do I need to do? What do I need to change in order to experience my magnitude and to quit playing tiny? And that's what miracles do. You know, miracles open the way for this acceptance, for giving yourself permission to see the magnitude and the power of thought. So, I think that's important that you start to realize that that's what these defense mechanisms are about. It's to keep you from seeing how powerful the thoughts are. That's, that's the first step in 
in opening to to the healing, to the experience. And Jesus says in the Course, it's not that you ask for too much. He says you ask for far too little. When you pray, we've been talking about prayer today, a lot about prayer, just open your mind and take the parameters off the prayer. Don't try to pray too small, you know, because that's the old habit of praying small and taking your little thimble up. Please, could I have a little, some drops of mana from heaven, you know. It's like, you are worth so much more than that. Jesus says that prisoners who've been held long in chains do not simply just rise up and spring out of the chains. They, it's, it's a process of, of releasing the chains that bind, you know. And, and that's where the, the desire, the persistence, stirring your heart cords up, like when we watched that movie last, last night, chances are, and we're singing all those songs at the top of our lungs, stirring that energy, feeling that love vibe, saying, yeah, I feel it. And you, and you do whatever you do to stir that vibe, to rekindle that spark. You know, something we were talking about today, the spark that it comes and goes, and it's it, the spark that comes so quick, it's like, I, I felt it, but it was so quick. And then it was gone, and it came back, but then it was gone. It's like, we, we're rekindling that flame. You know, we're, you know how when you are burning something like a fire, and it goes down and down, and then you just have the logs, and you have, they turn kind of white, and then if you go up and you, start blowing and then all of a sudden you get the glow back, yeah. you get that spark. Yeah. You've got to really be close to it and you've got to really blow on it, but yeah. you can do that. And, and if you ever had that happen where you just, and you keep at it, you keep blowing and blowing and blowing, and the flame comes back. It seemed like the fire was out. That's, that's how we have to do with our mind. We, it seemed like the ego has snuffed it snuffed our light out, but we just keep blowing on that coal, on that ember. Coming back, and then when you get it, then when you get the flame back, you get more kindling. You, you, get, you don't get giant logs and smash the thing, you get, some, you carefully get some logs to put just over, you cross it over the top of it and you let it, and you know, and you can get a bonfire going. And we have every intention of getting a bonfire of love going. Yeah. We have the Holy Spirit with us. We don't care how dark the darkness was, or how deep the fear was, or whatever. We could do this, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. We can do this. We really can. Yeah. We've got mighty companions around us. we got the best tools on the planet for doing it, you know, we don't have dull tools, it's like, you know, if you, if you had to, if you had to cut down a tree and you had a steak knife, and it was a four foot wide tree, no, we don't have steak knives, we don't even have axes and hatchets, we got a big, big chainsaw, yeah. and we're going into that tree with the big ch chainsaw, because that's what happens when you, when you really can get into the depth of the, of the metaphysics. That's what happens when you can start feeling the feelings, and you don't push them down, and you don't run and hide from them. You just say, okay, come on, I've been doing this for a long, probably thousands of years, pushing, pushing you away. So now it's time to turn it around, and, and we find what works. And as soon as you find what works for you, you ride it 
for everything you've got and you don't stop. You don't stop. It's like, the, it's like a wrestling match where the ego is like a sumo wrestler, but like the one in the past life pavilion. And you're down there and it's just squashed you, you know, it's like sitting, it's sitting there. It doesn't even have to spread out, it's just got you under its big butt. And it's just got you squashed like a gnat into the mat. And you are like, and you ain't, you know, you're under a lot of 450 pounds of flesh and you're trying to get up. And you are pinned. You are pinned in the worst way. You are squash pinned, you know, and you're not, you're not getting out. But, but the more you get into these metaphysics and the more you get into these dynamics, and we're trying, it's like you're getting, you're getting a little bit of your body in this metaphor out from under this 450 pound sumo wrestler. And you start to rekindle your strength so you can actually move more and more to the the edge, and then actually escape the pin, you know, like, like in wrestling, you can't, if you're under all that weight, there ain't no way that you're get, you're going to break the hold. But if you start to really go with this and really ride it, ride what works, you can actually start to get out from under all the weight. And then you can actually escape, I mean, you, can, you can actually break the break the hold, break the pin, and get out from under it. And it feels so good that after you've been under all this weight for so long, almost like a suffocating weight, like a heaviness that you thought, you were, you were trained and thought that you could never escape from it. Like it's a blackness. Jesus says, you put yourself into a blackness that was so dark, it was like pitch black, and then you just kept going even deeper into blackness, 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 like trying to really get lost. You know, not just kind of lost, like really lost. And now, you know, we're, we've got the torch that's going to take us back out. Like if we wound ourselves into a dark cave, we've got the torch, we've got the way, and we will be like the, the prisoner that escapes the cave. It's absolutely inevitable that we do this. And that's part of, I think, Jason has been emphasizing, you know, how, how precious, how important this is. We, this is, this is like the calling of our heart. There's nothing more important than using time in this way to really free ourselves.